We're here to dedicate a major expansion of NSCL, which the Board of Trustees approved just over a year ago to recognize the fruitful partnership between Michigan State University, the National Science Foundation, and the Department of Energy, which has made the lab possible and will allow us to build the world's leading facility for rare isotope beams over the next decade. MSU is proud to be the home of NSCL, and we're honored to have been selected by the U.S. Department of Energy as the site for the facility for rare isotope beams. Our tradition of cutting-edge nuclear science research spans 50 years of vision, beginning with President John Hanna and carried on through scientists and administrators since then, like Henry Blosser, the founding director of NSCL, and Sam Austin, who followed Dr. Blosser. It's my pleasure to, again, officially welcome you to this dedication and the other milestone in signing the cooperative agreement between MSU and DOE earlier this week. So now we're officially a federally funded project with DOE, as well as a strong and lasting partner with the National Science Foundation, who will be critical for our work in the coming years as well. It really is exciting that this facility represents that strong partnership between universities as well as then the two federal agencies so intricately involved in science funding, DOE and NSF. And we want to be that place in America where all those come together in a seamless way and move science forward on behalf of the nation. And also we want to be that project that when people look back in time, we're a place that would say that we set the bar extraordinarily high and we always got over it. The NSCL has shown itself to be a model for NSF investment. I give you some critical areas. Demonstrated leadership and innovation with benefits both to basic science and to society. Achievements include the development of the first superconducting cyclotron and the application of compact cyclotrons for medical treatment. Demonstrated leadership in education and mentoring from high school teachers to postdoctoral fellows. Since its inception, nearly 300 PhD degrees in nuclear physics have been awarded for work based at this laboratory to students from MSU and from other universities. And of course, the science, about which you'll hear more later today. The NSCL has demonstrated leadership in nuclear science, exploring the properties of atomic nuclei near the limits of existence, studying reactions with isotopes that live for a mere fraction of a second. These studies have applications to our understanding of the life and death of stars, offering a laboratory perspective into stellar interiors that is otherwise not accessible. From my point of view, this project is one that will enable research at the forefront of nuclear science. It will be executed by a team with first-class credentials, and it will be set in one of the country's premier research universities. It will greatly expand the range of nuclei available for laboratory study, with implications for understanding processes in the stars and the fundamentals of quantum systems. As with all basic research, it will also, along the way, develop technologies and train the next generation of researchers, many of whom will go on to apply their skills to more practical matters. A rare isotope beam facility has been discussed for some two decades by the nuclear physics community and has been repeatedly endorsed by various national advisory bodies. It is a priority then for the entire nuclear physics community and has been strongly supported by both of the relevant funding agencies, the NSF and the DOE. I and my DOE colleagues are pleased to be establishing this partnership with both MSU and the NSF and very much look forward to a successful on budget, on time completion, and the start of a very interesting scientific program. Well, I'm honored to be here this morning uh, to help celebrate the opening of this exciting world-class facility. Uh, I got my first tour this morning, uh, and I come here not as a scientist, but I am a Spartan. Uh, and I think I absorbed at least 1% of what I heard this morning. <laughs> the selection of Michigan State University as the place to house this cutting edge center is really a tremendous source of pride to the entire state. And Lord knows we need sources of pride right now uh, as we struggle to reinvent ourselves. But I think this facility represents really the kind of cutting edge uh, operation uh, that will hopefully be the future of Michigan uh, as we reinvent ourselves, as we become the new Michigan 
as we work to reinvent the auto industry as we see happening all around us right now, even though we're in uh, tough economics time, economic times, I sense that this project is, is the kind of thing that we can look to as our future. It's very, very exciting. Uh, it's a clear signal to the scientific community all across the world that Michigan's world-class universities and skilled workforce are here ready to lead the critical research and development needed for tomorrow's technological breakthroughs. And we're looking forward to learning about the opportunities that may exist for uh, continued commercial operations that will spin out eventually of this uh, facility. And our job is, of course, to figure out what those are and to help that happen just as quickly as possible while not destroying the, uh, the basic research uh, uh, mission of the organization but finding ways in which we can commercialize the technologies that emerge here. That's really what's, what it's all about. This will, just the construction of this facility will have a positive impact on our local economy. Uh, we expect that eventually 100 or 400 jobs will result uh, and the construction uh, will really result in at least a billion dollars of economic value to the state, uh, both in the terms of jobs and research activity. So on behalf of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, I want to congratulate and thank President Simon and all of the team who has worked so hard to bring this facility to Michigan.